Uh, so Golden Doves Class 208, page 126. This is something that we've been reading a few times. I'm just going to read it one more time because uh, I just feel like it's um, it's a bit difficult to understand. Um, so let's, let's, let's do it. Page 126. The idea of language comprising two autonomous yet semiologically connected systems leads directly to the nature of metaphor. So remember we read about the idea that there's semiotics. So for example, the oral law has language. It's 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 a text. It's there's a composition of words in the oral law, right? Now these words are to be understood at the semiotic level. There is no derasha on the text of the oral law, right? So um this is in the reason that you need talkin instruction, meaning when you study the oral law, when you study a Mishnah, the meaning of a Mishnah, you can't discover the meaning from the text itself. You need talkin instruction to explain it to you, right? Um so you're not going to make that shot on the oral law and try to discover new meanings in the oral law. So if you read a Mishnah, there's no derasha the Mishnah. Okay, so that's the semiotic level of text. And then we said that when you study the written law, so you have the you have the level of talkim where you need somebody to explain to you the pesukim. But it doesn't stop there, right? It doesn't stop there. You can make that a shot. You can think of new ideas and new concepts and make connections and generate new meanings that you can do in the Torah Shabbat, right? So you see these two levels of semiotic, where you where Talkin determines, instruction determines what the text means. And the semantic as in the Torah Shemichtav, where yes, you need Talkin to understand the Peshat. Somebody has to tell me how to read the letters, how to, what the meaning of the words are, but then I can make that a shot. So here we see that the language has two autonomous systems, the semiotic and the semantic. Um, they're semiologically connected in as much as the words operate at the semiotic level, and the same word or words operate at the semantic level. And this has to do with the idea of, um, of metaphor. Language is essentially metaphoric because the same element, the word, functions at two different levels, the semiotic and the semantic. And this is the idea of Shalom HaMelech in the book of Mishle, Lehavim Mashal Um Lisa, so every every word is actually every expression is actually a melissa. It's 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 given language. It's given I'm sorry language. Words are given meaning at the semiotic level, not uh, not based upon some sort of um, internal frame of reference. You need talkin. So. In order to understand the Melissa, you need somebody to explain to you the Melissa of the Lashon, right? You you can't discover it on your own, right? And then there's Mashal, so there's a there's a allegorical meaning to words as well, or words put together, right? So these are there's Mashal and there's Melissa. Lehavin Mashal Melissa, Divrei Chachamim Bechidotam. Let's continue. I'm intentionally doing this slowly, and I'm trying to really um, make a deep dive into this paragraph, because I feel like it was a bit difficult. Let me look at footnote 25. By virtue of using the same semiological system, these levels act like Borgi, Bor, Borgesian mirrors, Borges, right? Borges, Luis Borges, reflecting thereby distorting and deflecting 
the intention of each other. So let's talk about these Borgesian, Borges, I'm probably pronouncing that right, Borgesian mirrors. So, you know, when you have one mirror reflecting an object and then another mirror reflecting the reflection of the first object and then the third mirror reflecting the reflection of the second, I'm sorry, each one is reflecting the same object, but you have right, different mirrors reflecting it. So now you say, well, what do I care about that? Like, how does that have anything to do with my life? How does that have anything to do with me? And the answer is the brain is like a mirror. Every brain, you know, is like a mirror that reflects on the brain a certain reality is reflected on the brain, and then we perceive that reflection through our mind, right? Um, the word in Hebrew for you, is, this is the word temuna. So the word temuna ref idea, uh, reflects the idea of the mind being a mirror. So if I have a particular concept and I want to express it to you, so now your mirror reflects what my mirror is saying, and then let's say you exp and then let's say ten people are listening to me. So there's going to be ten mirrors reflecting what I'm saying. Each mirror is going to be a little different. And then, you know, they're going to be discussing among themselves, and it's going to be back and forth distortions because each mirror ultimately distorts. Right? A mirror is not a perfect portrayal of reality. So you get the idea of of the mirrors in uh, Borges. So he's saying by using the same semiological system. These are like Borgesian mirrors reflecting the intention of each other, right? Because it's not that the Melissa is divorced from the Mashal or from the Peshat, is divorced from the Derashat. There's a certain connection. They reflect back and forth, right? So the Derashat can't be divorced from the Peshat, right? You can't say, means you should eat pickles, even at the Derashat level, right? You have to have, there has to be some relationship, right? So they reflect back and forth, right? Um, to each other. Metaphor there is the intention at one level has perceived from the perspective of the other. So in metaphor, you have a particular intention. You intend that the words mean something. Right? So I give you a metaphor of a fox eating the uh, keramim, eating the vineyard. And for me, this is like phony, you know, rabbis and religious leaders, um, you know, distorting into and, and ruining the beautiful Torah. So there's, there's a metaphor. So it's the intention at one level. In this case, the fox is, let's say, for a phony religious leader, right? As perceived from the perspective of the other. Interesting. So at one level, I perceive it as a fox. It's a very cute story. But at the other level, I perceive it as a phony religious leader. And then the back and forth, the fox is shrewd and looks, you know, yeah, so, right, the back and forth. But then the, the, the phony religious leader is self-serving. And we realize the fox himself is self-serving. So you see this back and forth reflections. Because language includes two independent systems, it is self-expressive and reflective, right? So otherwise, whenever I want to talk about things, I'm always going to be using language even to talk about language, right? So it's self-reflective. I can talk about linguistics and structuralism and the structure of words and the structure of language and syntax. I'm using language to describe language. It can be expressive about itself precisely because it comprises two distinct structures acting as mirrors reflecting one another. How can language describe language? And the answer is because you have these two um, systems, the semiotic and the semantic, Peshat and Derashah, let's say, roughly. Um, and each one is a, like a mirror reflecting the other. So back and forth through this, you know, I, I, almost like you're triangulating the meaning, although triangle is three, right? But the idea is from the back and forth, I can try to understand something about language itself where the language is going to describe language because there's a metaphoric language. I don't mean exactly what the word specifically means, right? I have to kind of like, you know, extend the meaning metaphorically if I'm going to use language to describe language, but that's possible because of the nature of language. All right. It's possible uh, precisely because it comprises two distinct structures acting as, as mirrors reflecting one another. 
So let's talk about the dual structure of language, right? You have the literal meaning, let's call it, where you need talkin to explain to you what the meaning is. And you know, let's say the more metaphoric meaning or semantic or derasha. And um, so when you, because you have the tension between these two aspects of language, that's what allows, and each one influences the other. Again, the idea of the fox as a creature that just wants to fill up its stomach that influences my idea of the phony religious leader who just cares about himself. And then the phony religious leader um, who, who seems to be ultimately a person who in his personality repels us would reflect upon the fox. And now I view the fox as almost like, uh, you know, a re- in, in a re- repulsive fashion, right? So, um, so here you see yeah, the, the two ideas the, the two, um, let's say, layers, or not layers, dimensions of language, that's a better word. They're constantly reflecting and distorting each other and, you know, re-reflecting and re-distorting and re-allowing for nuanced meaning. So um, so this reflective interplay leads to the ability to have a nuanced comprehension of language itself through language, right? I think we'll stop here.